Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a very special video. Well, it's actually tonight. I didn't release a day video for you guys in the first time in a long, long time. Maybe uh, since I started doing this a couple months back. So I greatly apologize. We had a um, fabulous day today with grandparents and all that good stuff with the kiddo. So uh, I am a little late in putting this out. Uh, also, a couple things. You might notice that uh, the lighting seems a little bit different. I got one of those ring lights on Amazon because somebody was complaining about not being able to see the bottles. So today you will definitely be able to see the detail in the bottle. So what I want from you is I want you to tell me how this looks um, if the quality is good, if you can see the bottle, if there's too much glare, if I need to turn it up or turn it down, or you can even see the ring in my eyes. Look at that, like a real YouTuber. Um, so anyways, uh, just um, one notice, one switch that you might have noticed. Another thing, before we hop into this, um, I just want to say that, uh, you know, something about fragrance for me um, just goes along with you in life in the most beautiful way, you know, when it's it's all BS and bad, fragrance is something for you to lean on and, and take solace in. When it's the most amazing times of your life, wedding, the birth of your children, fragrance just amplifies that. I'll always remember that I was wearing Tom Ford's Oud Wood when my daughter was born. And so, you know, it's it's fragrance is art, period, to me. And that's why I'm doing this channel, because I want to share the passion and the love of fragrance that I have. And I know there's a lot of people out there that, um, through this pandemic and all the hard times that we've had, they've really used fragrance as, you know, a, a crutch, if you will, uh, while you're stuck in the house. It's, you discover something beautiful in a bottle. I mean, you pull a bottle out and you spray it and a beautiful smell comes out. And you think about all the people who worked on it, the ingredients that went into it, the marketing, the this and that. One thing Roja Dove is definitely right on is uh, he says that, you know, after a brand is defunct, I'm not showing Creed because they're defunct or anything, but I'm just saying after a brand is no more, all that's left are these beautiful bottles, these flacons that they leave behind. I'm showing this because I'm going to talk about this today. This is my scent of the day, by the way. It is Asia aluminum, which is a discontinued creed. All of the gray cap EDT creeds are discontinued. And it's a bit of a shame because these were actually, I think, some of the best value because when Creed was selling these at retail, I think they were only like $180 for 75 ml or 120 or, you know, the prices have obviously incrementally gone up, but they were never as crazy as you know, $500 for 100 ml now. Um, and there were a couple in this line that I really, really like. Um, Royal Scottish Lavender is a beautiful lavender fragrance. That's an EDT. All the gray caps are discontinued in EDTs. Um, and there's another one that's very similar to this. I didn't grab the flacon um, just because today I just wanted to kind of do a quick video. I didn't want to show a million bottles, but I do have a surprise unboxing for you guys. Um, so it's late, so I don't want to make this an hour video, although maybe I will make it an hour video. That's kind of been my trend lately. <laughs> um, but there's another EDT that, um, or another fragrance that Creed put out that is very similar in this, that I have really been talking about how much I love and how it's one of my best discoveries of last year, uh, Creed's Venezia. And these kind of share some similarities, but we'll talk about that after the surprise unboxing. Let, let me show you what I bought. I, I have gotten a good deal on a couple items that I just have not been able to say no to. I really hope that um, this is fragrance. It's going to be a little disappointing one day when I open this and it's a coffee mug or something. Um, all right, let's see. Is it fragrance? Sorry, I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I have my trusty uh, unboxing knife that's ready for any box that comes its way. Look at that. Um, okay. Yes, it is. Okay. So, let me show you what we have here. So, this is a purchase that happened because of one of my subscribers 
and becoming good friend in the fragrance community, Jonathan 1970. Thank you very much. Um, this was kind of a bonus that I threw on because I needed to get to a certain amount for free shipping, and it's a shame I don't have the regular original Encre Noir, right? Um, and these are discontinued. They are not. Everyone else is uh, reviewing Dracar Intense right now. Uh, I have no interest in smelling that fragrance, by the way. Um, but these are discontinued fragrances. They are... Uh, let me make sure what he said is correct. Yes, it is. Uh, he told me they are Cosmere. And sure enough, they are Cosmere. You can see, yeah, this light really helps, doesn't it? You can really see the bottom of the bottle now. Hope you guys appreciate the professionalism that I'm really trying to put into this channel now. Um, so, uh, the fragrance... Um, let me pull it up here in uh, Fragrantica because you know what's amazing is I forgot the name of the fragrance. Hang on. It's a discontinued fragrance. Ah, Horizon. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a fragrance by Guy Laroche called Horizon. And this is a discontinued men's fragrance. And you can see it has the Dracar Noir um, bottle style. And I got five of these because they were $7.50 for 50 ml. I just couldn't say no. At $7.50, um, you know, it, um, it was something that I just could not say no to. Um, and let, well, I don't need to open all of them. Let me just show you the other one. The other one that I got is the regular Encre Noir. I've talked about my love for Encre Noir à l'extrême and Encre Noir Sport. And I did like this. I have smelled this before, but I just didn't like it as much as the Alex Stram. But it is the original, and value for money with that fragrance is through the roof. You know, you're talking, I got a, a 100 ml bottle for $30. So $30, and I got five of these for $7.50 a piece. So, um, I'm not going to do a first impression today on this. Um, but I will wear it. I'll give it a full wearing and I'll give you my initial impression soon. So watch for that video to come. And if you scurry the net, I think it was, was it Fragrance X or Fragrance Net? I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm a little discombobulated today. Uh, Reno, Nevada. Where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? Um, well look on Fragrance Net or Fragrance X. And, um, oh, let's see here if it says, just wanted to say thanks. Um, fragrance.com. I don't think I bought it from fragrance.com. I thought it was fragrance. Well, it says fragrance.com. I thought it was fragrance X, but maybe that is fragrance.com. Anyways, long story short is, uh, if you scour the net, you will find these on either fragrance net or fragrance X or something like that for $7.50, and they are the Cosmere version of Horizon, which um, is apparently a very complex masculine scent from the 90s. Um, let me pull up the details on it, because honestly, I don't know much about it other than um, Jonathan was saying, hey, there's this amazing deal on a vintage fragrance right now, that Cosmere version, um, Elaine Astori is the perfumer. It came out in 93, and it's got notes like, uh, aldehydes, mint, lavender. There's green notes like artemisia and pine, and then there's a floral heart, old school carnation, which I love, cyclamen, caraway, rose, geranium, jasmine, oak moss, leather, cedar, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, sea salt, and amber. So this is right at the start of the 90s, you know, aquatics kind of taking over. So I'm still hoping this has some vintage 80s, um, you know, um, some vintage 80s flair in the fragrance, if you will. Um, and, you know, for $7.50, I mean, come on, you can't say no to that. Uh, new, just unboxed, but completely unsprayed. I got five of them. Absolute no-brainer. Okay, let's do the second unboxing. And as you can see, the second one came from good old Canada. Oops, look at that. 
Let's try that again. Good old Canada. The um, maple leaf is upside down. And I know what this is. And this is another one that I just got an amazing deal on that I could not say no to. Um, let me get this bad boy open. Oh boy. Here we go. Moment of truth. Yes, it is. Okay. Here you go. Fur Yo by Jax Bogart. Can you believe I can smell this through the box? Um, so this, if you've never seen this fragrance, this is supposed to be their take on an 80s animalic fragrance. And the perfumer is Ron Winograd, and Parfumo actually even credits Terry Vassar. But I got five 100 ml bottles on fragrancebuy.ca. This one I do know the name of. Fragrancebuy.ca for $143. Absolutely unbelievable deal. I already have a bottle of this. I was only going to buy one backup, but when I saw it was $27 a bottle, unsprayed, new, I just, um, I couldn't say no. And you've seen this bottle before, but I will show you uh, again. Some people say the older bottles that say 80 degrees or 80 you know, percentage, if you see it down there on the bottom, is, is the better one to get because it's older, but I actually have the newer version and I love it. So um, I would love to compare the older version one day, but I am so happy to have 500 ml worth of juice for 143 bucks of this discontinued beast. I love this fragrance. Um, I'll talk about it more later on at some other time. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. They did send me five. Okay. Um, let me put this away and we will circle back to this. Uh, oh, look at them. Hello, fragrance connoisseur. How nice of them. Okay. So that takes care of the unboxings. So now let's talk about my scent of the day. So if you've been watching my channel, you have probably noticed that I've been doing a lot of things to highlight fragrances overall. So I've talked about a lot of fragrances without doing many top 10 lists. I did one top 10 list and it was my favorite fragrances of all time to wear for me personally. And surprise, surprise, that's the most popular video on my channel. So if I was somebody who you know, was just going off of popularity, I could easily see how a top 10 list could just get, you could fall into that trap of doing them over and over and over. And I've done a lot of, this is not a top 10, um, you know, with, with individual notes and there's more of that to come. I still plan on doing some with vanilla and stuff like that. And then I've highlighted perfumers, but I haven't really done a review and I'm not going to lie. I haven't given it any thought at all. This is a fragrance that the reason I just wanted to single it out and kind of talk about it, I don't even want to call it a review. I just want to call it maybe like fragrance musings or, you know, open conversation on Creed's Acer Aluminum because I'm not going to sit up here and act like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the mountaintop talking down to you guys. I just want to kind of have a conversation and give you my thoughts on this. And if somebody gets some value out of it, fantastic. If it even reaches one person, I will feel you know, like I have, um, like I've done my job. I feel like I uh, have to share kind of what's inside of me when it comes to these fragrances. So um, again, this is not a sponsored video or anything. All the fragrances I buy with my own money, these are my thoughts. And yes, I wore this entire bottle. This is, this is my dent that I put into it. And um, believe it or not, I love this fragrance. This is a 1973 release, if I'm not mistaken, if what they say is true, um, which I think after the mid or late 60s, once Olivier Creed founded Creed, I'm pretty sure most of the scents that actually got released then were properly credited. It's not like um, Venezia, which, you know, um, well, it was released in the 80s and everyone knows that, but they claim it was, this is what Creed does. They claim, oh, we released it in the 80s, but really we created this formula in 1899 for a Spanish princess. You know, come on. Um, but this one, I don't think they're claiming that it was released for um, 
you know, um, that it was released for, I don't know, pick a character from the past, FDR or something like that, which, you know, I think they do claim that uh, JFK wore vetiver or something, but uh, so they've made these wild accusations in the past that have been unfounded and stuff like that. Um, don't sue me, Creed. This is just hearsay that I've heard. Um, but this came out in 1973, and it's a very simple composition. So this is what I used to really love about Creed, and this is what drew me to them when I was a, uh, when I was uh, less experienced, let's say. It's a simple note breakdown. Here, let me spray this on for you. And this is the, um, by the way, this is the fire hose atomizer. Let me show you this atomizer. Do you see that? Look how much juice that put on my hand. Oh man, I miss these atomizers. Look at that. Unbelievable. Just douses you with juice. Um, and, oh, so good. Um, so, what's good about this, and what kind of makes me sad that Creed left making fragrances like this. So, I'm, I'm envisioning Oliver Creed when he first started, Olivier Creed, so, sorry, when he first started his company, and I'm thinking, you know, he's having these conversations. Let's say he's having conversations with perfumers, and what's popular in the early, in the early 70s? Well, Shalimar came out in the 1960s, and that was a masculine release on um, Guerlain's uh, Shalimar. Uh, did I say Shalimar came out in the 60s? Sorry, Abbey Rouge came out in the 60s by Guerlain, and that was a masculine take on Shalimar. Okay, so instantly you're hit with three notes, and they're big ones. You get this bergamot, which is beautiful bergamot. It's actually the same bergamot that I smell in Venezia, and it's a winning combination. The bergamot and vanilla that they use in this feels very similar to uh, Venezia. And that's one of the best Creed fragrances I've ever smelled, ever. In fact, it's one of my favorite vanilla fragrances ever. Um, and what they've done is they've taken that powdery DNA that was starting to become popular in the 60s for men, and they mixed in what smells like a potpourri spice. Okay, my wife always says that this reminds her of potpourri, okay? Now, I don't necessarily get that, but I understand what she's saying. Um, and what's interesting is, in my mind, or maybe as the bottle has opened up, because I've owned this now for a good five or six years, it's, it's been a long time, uh, the batch code, do I know the batch code? Yes, C1015P01, so this is a 2015 bottle. So I've owned this now seven years, and I bought this new. Six, seven years. Um, and so she says that this reminds her of potpourri, okay? And the reason that she says that is there's these um, spices in it that give off that potpourri scent. It, it, it is in the background, but it's buried by some of the most beautiful vanilla that you will ever smell. The vanilla in this is top notch, okay? There's also what smells to my nose, again, and I smelled the exact same thing in Venezia. It smells like real ambergris. Now, whether there's any real ambergris used, I don't know. But to Creed's credit, um, you used to get a lot of bang for your buck in the old days because even Pierre Bourdon, when he was making Green Irish Tweed, said that Olivier Creed was kind of laughed at in the industry at the time because he gave perfumers the ability to use an unlimited budget, okay? So if most perfumes costed $7 to make, they would cost, Creed's would cost 15 or 20. They would double or triple or, you know, $30 just for the juice. Forget the packaging and cap and all that stuff and marketing, if they did marketing. Um, and so for a perfumer, it was a bit of a... Um, it was a bit of a dream job because you could create 
the fragrance uh, in in full without any limitations. Most brands want to cut corners. They want to cut costs. They want to keep costs down. If they can get two fragrances that smell very similar to 95% of the population and one costs half as much, they're going to go with the one that costs half as much. Olivier Creed said, forget that. We want to use the best quality materials ever. And the reason that in the 70s and 80s that I think, and this is my opinion on this, but I think the reason that Creed became so popular is the scents are not very complex. So this scent is basically bergamot, spices, vanilla, ambergris with a twist. The twist is fruity notes with a focus on banana, okay? Now, that seems very strange. But Acer Aluminum is supposed to be a reference to like the um, chain mail that knights wore in the old days, right? So you get this vanilla, you get this a little bit of dirty ambergris, but it's not, um, it, it doesn't go as animalic as something like um, Shalimar feels much more animalic to me in the, in the dry down. This has some strangeness from the fruits and the um, banana especially, but it does give off a little bit of that metallic vibe, whether it's subconscious because of the marketing or whether it's just a mixture of the bergamot with the fruits and the vanilla and ambergris. But that, that banana note, some people say it smells like, um, you know, 1970s um, porno uh, handlebar mustache, you know, um, plaid couches and... Um, uh, patches on your elbow, ja you know, that kind of vibe. And I completely get what they're saying there. But to make a fragrance like this, that, you know, vanilla for the longest time was considered a feminine note. Men didn't wear vanilla, and men definitely didn't wear powdery scents. So to release something like this, I could totally see what was probably going through their heads if 1973 is actually when this came out. Um, because Shalimar, um, is a bit of an inspiration here. It's almost like, imagine a masculine Shalimar with the strangest banana twist that you could ever imagine, right? It seems outrageous, but it works. And, you know, it's something that I am very lucky and blessed to be able to experience. The prices on this are absolutely outrageous in the secondary market now. I think I bought this new six years ago for 180 bucks, I think, okay? Don't quote me on it, but Creed's prices didn't go nuts because Aventus wasn't the hit that it was in 2015, um, or let's say even 16, right? Um, it was a hit, but it, was, it didn't really blow up like it did until, you know, 20... 18, 19, stuff like that. Um, and so they were still a little bit more reasonably priced. And I think they were trying to move some old stock because I think this was just about to get discontinued when I bought this. Um, so that's kind of the scent. It starts out, it starts out um, with just beautiful bergamot mixing with the fruits and spices, ambergris, vanilla, and then it just dries into this beautiful, simplistic, but beautiful composition. And I absolutely love that. I love what they've done with this. It's a shame that these old EDTs are discontinued because what, what really, you know, kind of rubs me, maybe rubs me the wrong way even, is these EDTs uh, perform a million times better than the current EDPs that they are charging more than three times as much as, as when this was retail, marketed at retail for 75 ml. It's insane. Um, uh, so, you know, if you're somebody who says creeds don't perform, if you're somebody who loves vintage Guerlain, that's another one. If you love vintage Chalimar like I do from the 20s, or vintage uh, Abbey Rouge from the 60s, you have to get your nose on this, and you have to get your nose on Venezia. Venezia is actually a better scent than this, even. Um, so, will I be buying another bottle of this? No. The secondary market prices on this are outrageous. I will cherish the uh, juice that I have left. Um, this is probably more a winter scent for me, because that vanilla, potpourri, 
um, you know, banana fruit type smell, um, makes it wear very heavy. Even for an EDT, it feels heavy. If I, if I blind sprayed this on a card and put it under 10 different fragrance connoisseurs nose that did not know this fragrance, I would be shocked if a single one said this is a Creed. Because it doesn't feel like a Creed. You know, Creed's um, DNA turned into, you know, Green Irish Tweed and, and Royal Water and Aralfa and, Miles and Millicene Imperial and stuff like that. That light, airy, salty, you know, it had that sparkle, that ambergris sparkle in the base. But they're known for like summer scents, scents you can wear any time of the day. This is exactly the opposite. And that's why, as a fragrance connoisseur, I love it so much because it's so out of left field from what you would expect from Creed. Um, it is the anti, it's the antithesis of what a Creed scent is. Um, and I like that. It feels like Creed was trying to get their feet on the ground at the time and they didn't know, um, you know, they didn't know who they were yet. They didn't know who to target. And they just wanted to make amazing, high quality. High quality is the thing. You're not going to spray this on and be wowed by the um, complexity. You're not going to spray this on and read 27 notes like Erosia. It's not there. It's five notes, you know, and that's pretty much it. Maybe you could break the spices down. Um, maybe you could break the fruits down. Maybe you could say it's blackcurrant and banana or maybe you could say it's raspberry and strawberry and banana or you know the fruits kind of just blend together into this fruit slash banana smell is the way i can describe it um excuse me but the vanilla the high quality ambergris all that stuff it's um it's just quality that you have a hard time finding nowadays even in high even in even if you go pay a thousand dollars for erosia you know, Roja has his DNA. You're getting that roja fied fragrance, right? This is completely different, totally out of left field. So I will cherish the juice that I have. I think it deserves to be highlighted. Some of the people whose nose that I trust, go watch Thomas from Early Greeks review on this. Um, it's perfect. I haven't watched that in years and years and years, but uh, he absolutely nailed uh, this fragrance. So for fragrance connoisseurs, um, and he did bash on the cap, which, uh, for what they're charging, this little plastic dinghy cap, um, probably is a bit of a disgrace, but to be honest, I, other than the cap, I actually like what they used to do here. You got the great atomizer. It's a, it's a decent presentation. Um, you did get this cheap little sticker that said the name because they would just slap this on the generic bottle, whatever. It's the juice that I care about. And the juice here is high quality. It's high class. It stands out. It is elegant, but it's also different. So if you want something pure elegance to me, without the different, go for Venezia. They are very similar to each other in, in a sense. Venezia came a decade later. Um, but if you want something somewhat elegant and unique. I didn't wear this to the father-daughter dance yesterday. Be I was going to, but it's just too weird. You know, I, I, I went with Erosia instead. Um, and so, you know, this is I, Sunday, you know, lounge around the house, see some family. You're not going to go offend some stranger. That's when I would whip this out. But uh, for a fragrance lover, it is something to put on your list, especially if you can find a good deal, which they're fewer and fewer and fewer and harder to find now. Um, don't pay $500 for 75 ml. That's all I ask. If you can find a deal for $250, you know, maybe, but don't go pay $500 bucks for, for uh, 75 ml. It's good, but it's not that good. Um, so that's my review. I don't know what I'm going to call these. If you have any recommendations on what I should call my reviews, uh, let me know. I'm going to call them like fragrance musings or something. Um, I don't know what, I don't know why I'm so hung up on the, on the uh, idea of a review, but uh, I would love your feedback on that. I would love your feedback on the lighting, if it needs to be brighter or darker and what you think of it, or if you like the old lighting. And uh, I would love your feedback on Acier Aluminum or Horizon uh, Encre Noir, 
or Furio, which I have and own and love and all that good stuff, but those are backup bottles. So um, if you have any thoughts, I love seeing your faces down below. I love seeing your comments. Um, I love you know he hearing your feedback as well. I learn more from you guys than you do from me. And uh, I really appreciate everyone watching me and joining me on this uh, fragrance is art journey. So cheers, peace, and I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.